G'day guys and girls, and welcome back to another vlog. On today's vlog, I went and sourced the most affordable, wide angle, fast aperture lens I possibly could for the Fujifilm system. The TT Artisian 17mm f1.4, because I'm on a quest to find the best and most affordable, budget-friendly lens for any beginner photographer out there. Not for the amateur or anything like that. This is the pure beginner that wants to buy a first lens to dive in to understand night photography. 150 bucks, no idea how good it's gonna be, but we're gonna find out. Okay, one thing to note about this lens so far is extremely small and extremely lightweight, which so far is a big tick for a 17mm 1.4, a possible lens that I'm going to recommend for beginner and budget night sky photographers. That is a big tick because you don't want to carry around a big, bulky, heavy lens in your camera bag when you just learn the craft of night photography. But in tonight's video, I want to incorporate me using this lens for the very first time. I don't want to previously go out and understand how this lens is good, how it sucks, where it shoots good, because I want to go through tonight, understand the best settings to use this, and then explain to you what I'm going through when I'm first shooting this lens, because that's what's going to happen when you're a budget beginner photographer. You're going to go out there and struggle just like I am. So if I can go through the struggles for you, and then possibly, if this lens is good enough, recommend it for a budget photographer. That's how it may be. But I was going to go out and shoot something a little bit more complex tonight, and I thought to myself, Matt, if you're going to recommend a $150 lens to a budget photographer that's never really shot the night sky photography, it's probably not a good idea to exposure blend those images. Plus, we've got a big ball of energy in the sky tonight, a 40% moon. I'm still used to shooting in Europe. It's probably equivalent to a 60% moon in Europe because the pristine clear skies down here in South Australia. But right now I'm gonna go fiddling around with this lens, see what we can get out of it. Then I'll discuss with you what's going on. Right, if you're a Fujifilm purist just like me, this lens is gonna do your absolute ringer in because the aperture ring is on the front element of this lens and the focusing ring is close to the body. Yes, that is the complete opposite to any other Fujifilm system or any other third party for Fujifilm out there it will do your nut in just like it's doing mine. The main reason behind that is, is because from muscle memory, I wanna go through and shoot 1.4, f2 to f2.8. I'm going through and just nudging focus. Now, generally, not always, but generally, the lower the budget of the lens, the harder it is to find perfect focus and get that accurate sharpness out of the lens because they're generally a soft lens anyway. So bumping that focus is crazy annoying. Getting on to focusing of this lens. So far from the naked eye, even with my Coke bottle eyes, it doesn't look really that sharp. The, inf the infinity focus might as well be on this fence here because it doesn't do anything on the lens. It's like turning eight times on other lens to get focusing. You put it to infinity focus, everything is blurry. It's absolute jargon. I've gone back probably one to two eighth of that focusing ring to find what I think suits this better. But the positive about that is once it's a manual focus lens, I can either just mark it, take a picture, whatever it may be, and that is my focusing forever. It's not focused by a wire like any other automatic focus lenses are. I can go back and just turn that, and that will be my focus once I've narrowed it down after 10, 15, 20 shoots. I get comfortable with this lens. So that isn't really a big issue. The issues I'm having with this lens so far aren't issues with the lens. It's with me being a purist with Fujifilm and the gripes that I've got. But now I'm gonna change it to portrait orientation, try and really, really spend a bit more time trying to find that focusing. As I said, once we find it, we'll know it for the rest of our life with this lens and just keep getting those images. Then we can go through and change some settings to see how this is going because that moon, it's brightening up everything out here. So right now I wanna go through and find the optimal settings for this lens. I've never shot with a 17mm prime before, especially for night sky photography. So I wanna find the best settings for the conditions we have right now using photo pills for my shutter speed. So going down for spot stars, I'm shooting with the Fujifilm X-T3. We wanna shoot at 17 millimeters. 
Now I want to go through at 1.4. I've got an MPF rule at 9.06, which I'm following. So I'll do about 10 seconds, but I think that would be too bright for that 40% moon. I've got a pretty small city behind me where I live to here. I am shooting in about a border two right now. So it is a little bit more light than we are shooting with the deep night skies up north in our outback. So I want to go through now and just double check at say F2. 10 seconds, F2.8, 11.86. So I think for a constant there, we can shoot around that 10 seconds and change everything else around that. So if I go through and change that to a 10 seconds at 1.4, we can change our ISO down to 2000. So 10 seconds will be a constant, aperture will change, and my ISO will change a little bit around the compensation for the aperture. So now I'm gonna get three shots, 1.4, F2 and F2.8, and see how we go. I don't wanna to show too much exuberance about this lens right now, because I've been called out before. I've done some lens reviews, looked in the back of the camera, and the camera just shined these images. The back of the screen of the Fujifilm system blows me away how beautiful that is. So, any little issue, I take it home, look on the computer and think, Christ, that's a little bit worse than I thought. So I have to be a little bit careful what I say. But whatever I do say, remember, this is a $150 lens. Now, what I am gonna say is 1.4, she sucks. It's no good at all. Comma is the weirdest I've ever seen on a lens in my life. It's like a butterfly effect, it just fades out. It's quite nice, but it's not what we're after. Talking about bad, Whew! Venetting, it is one of the worst lenses I've ever seen in my life for venetting on the back of the camera. Like, really bad. But the good thing is, you take that lens off, throw it away, grab another one, chuck it on, change to F2, it's like a completely different play lens. The center pops right out, comma, it's not gone, but it gets drastically, drastically better. We have to remember with these third-party lenses, the camera and lens don't speak to each other. If you get a native Fujifilm uh, lens on the front, they speak to each other and do corrections inside of the camera. So when we take these images home, we have to correct them a little bit ourselves with that venetting, that color rendition, all that goodness that we love to do in post-production. So that's one key element to take away when you download these images at the end of this video. But great at F2. I loved it at F2, a drastic change for this lens. I thought there'd be a drastic change going to f2.8 also, but not as much as I was after, especially from that 1.4 to f2. There may be, but just because there's such a drastic change f1.4 to f2, it might not show a big difference between those two. But we have got optimal conditions, a 40% moon, a little city behind me where I live to, and a border two condition. So I thought about it. That's what budget and beginner photographers would be going out. They wouldn't go out in the deep, dark skies up north shooting at f1.4 focus stacking. They'd be going out to get good results from an image they can just drive to not too far away. And that's how we're testing out this lens because I think that is what is fair. So, I'm gonna show you those images right now. Let me know what you think, especially with that YouTube compression, and I guarantee you'll be pretty bloody impressed with it. Enjoy them. Radio, she's not bad, eh? For 150 bucks, I thought to myself, I paid 130 bucks for juice to fill that van the other day. That's 150 bucks. I could take an image, sell it to some social media client or wherever it may be, and make half my money back overnight. That's literally how easy it could be. But for 150 bucks, it's not throwaway money because we're going through a recession. Times are bloody tough right now, but it's a good lens to get and understand how to learn and take night photography images, especially, especially if you're just using it for personal and social media use. If you're taking prints, I don't recommend this lens. It's gonna show up everything that I hate about this lens, it's gonna show up on print and you're gonna have to hang that on your wall and be disappointed because this idiot told you to get that lens. If you are gonna get a lens that you wanna do more professional stuff with, I do recommend getting the Samyang lens but it is an F2, 12 mil, a little bit wider, but this lens performed very well at F2, so that comparison isn't actually as bad as I thought. The Samyang clearly wins hands down, but if you're just starting out, 
can I recommend this for your Fujifilm, Sony, whatever it is system you're using for night sky photography? I possibly could. I never thought I'd be that person to recommend a cheap budget lens. But if you're learning, if you are learning night sky photography, there's one thing that you'll need, a camera, a tripod, and a good lens. That good lens means a lens that you can use, not print and showcase in a gallery and win millions of dollars. It's getting the image, an image that you couldn't get before. And that's what this lens allows you to get, to get out there and learn night sky photography. If you do want to learn some night sky photography, I'll leave a link below over to my membership course, which can take you four hours to learn all the images inside and out of night sky photography for beginners. That will really help you out also. And that will cost you one fifteenth of the price of this lens. That is how cheap it is. So that is really good also. But guys, also down there will be a big subscribe button to hit that, but that's not mainly what I'm after. I'm after you to download these images and let me know what you think about this budget friendly, let's call it a budget friendly beginner's kit. Because I think I'd recommend it, but that doesn't mean much. I want to hear from you guys down below. Would you recommend this for Billy Bob and Jane down the road? I think I would. Guys, that's me down for tonight. Ciao!